Hello there, I'm Dr. Allinger. Hi, sorry to bother you. Oh, no bother. We're open. You are? Good, good. We had heard that this was a... Uh... We heard that this is a scientific museum. Oh no, you misheard. You're looking for the Museum of Science. This is a Museum of Silence. I think I'm still mishearing. Come on, Dad, I want to look around. I could give you a guided tour if you'd like. There's nothing in it. It's, like, empty. Not quite empty. Each jar is airtight, hermetically sealed. Each one contains someone's dying breath. I have the largest collection of last breaths in the world. Some of these contain the final exhalations of some very famous people. If you'd like, you can hear the last breath of William R. Seed. Is he famous? He was a celebrity in the way that criminals can sometimes be celebrities. A source of public outrage and fascination. A few years ago, he took a seat in the electric chair. I issued the death certificate myself. He holds a special place of honor in my museum. He was the very first last breath I ever collected. What did he do? Strangle children. Preserve them in his freezer to take them out every now and then just to talk to them. People will collect anything, I always say. Go ahead and listen if you want. I can't hear anything. Just wait. There are many different types of silence. Silence of a seashell, silence after a gunshot. His last breath is in there. Your ears just haven't become accustomed to it yet. Did you hear it? It was like a hiccup, but inside out. Don't you think this is a little unscientific? Even if you did manage to capture the last bit of carbon dioxide someone exhaled, it wouldn't make a sound. You can't bottle the sound of someone's breath. No, but it isn't a sound that's being bottled, only a certain silence. We all have our different silences. Your ears can discern even between specific kinds of love. So how do you collect these, uh, last breaths? With an aspirator. A small pump that draws a person's exhalations into a vacuum container. I keep it in my doctor's bag at all times, just in case. It's a device of my own design, although similar equipment has been around since the beginning of the 19th century. This one says Poe. Yes, people have been collecting last breaths as long as it's been the technology to make my hobby possible. I paid $12,000 for that one. It was offered to me by the great-grandson of the doctor who watched him die. This is ridiculous. It may sound like a lot of money, but believe me, it was a bargain. Some scientists seem to have a specific feeling that resonate with them. Many who listen to Poe's final breath sense a word not spoken, a last want. Listen and you'll hear it too. Can I listen, Dad? Shh. Of course, alcoholism. Poor man. You know, I memorized The Raven when I was in sixth grade. Recited in front of my entire class without mistake. Oh, come on. There's a speaker hidden underneath the bottle. Someone whispering the word whiskey. I didn't hear a whisper. I just had a thought. Like someone's voice was in my head. The volume's turned low, so it's subliminal. Are they all famous people? Not at all. How about the dying size of graduate students, bureaucrats, literary critics, any number of assorted nobodies. One of the most exquisite silences in my collection is the last breath of a janitor. Carrie Mayfield. Is that one of your nobodies? A housewife, I'd guess. Carrie Mayfield was a young Miss Florida. 
beautiful in the extreme, on her way to New York with her parents and fiancé to post for the cover of a woman's magazine, her big break. Only her jet crashed over the Everglades. Lots of people died. Carrie, though, she survived for a time. She splashed through the burning jet fuel while escaping the wreck, and over 80% of her body was burned. She lost her voice screaming for help. She lasted in intensive care for just over a week. I was teaching then and brought my medical students in to see her, as a curiosity. At the time, it was rare to see someone alive who had been burned that way. It was so comprehensible. Parts of her body fused other parts and so on. Fortunately, I had my aspirator with me when, since she died while we were examining her. That is the most horrible thing that I have ever heard. What about her parents, her fiancé? They died in the crash, burned to death right in front of her. Not sure their bodies were ever discovered. The hours... I don't believe you. I do not believe a single thing about this entire place. And I think this is a pretty silly way to scam people out of their money. You will remember that I charged you no admission. This is a free exhibit. Let's start with one of the other ones first. A lot of people don't like what they hear out of Carrie Mayfield. Huh? Thank you. 